You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 28th of February and I'm Kate from Milford. As widely feared and speculated, the geopolitical landscape in Eastern Europe worsened this week as Russia began a military invasion of Ukraine, the ramifications of which are still uncertain. This caused markets to be volatile across all asset classes, with the most obvious impact being on oil and energy prices. Russia supplies about 40% of Europe's natural gas, and as such, the European natural gas prices soared last week. Crude oil prices surged to just over $100 per barrel on Thursday, the highest level since 2014. Oil did retrace some of this, settling just above $90 per barrel at the end of last week. U.S. President Joe Biden announced the U.S. would release more crude oil from its strategic reserves in hopes to alleviate some pricing pressure. Gold prices also surged above $1,096 per ounce, given gold is considered a safe haven for investors and hence is attractive in uncertain times. Following the news on Thursday, the Nasdaq experienced a large intraday move after being down 3.4% early in the session and finishing up 3.3%. Friday's session saw most indices on the back foot again with the Dow, S&P 500 and Nasdaq all off by about 0.8% in the morning, but all climbed throughout the day and closed up between 1.5 and 2.5%. Staying in the US, the core PCE price index print for January was 5.2%, which was 0.1% above expectations. This is the preferred measure of inflation for the Federal Reserve and is another data point that suggests inflation is a lot stickier than many market participants anticipated. Moving closer to home, the RBNZ hiked their cash rate by 25 basis points, bringing it to 1%. In Australia, the wage price index rose in line with expectations, but was still short of the level required for a hawkish RBA. Interestingly, total wages, including bonuses, was strong, indicating companies are likely paying bonuses to attract and retain staff, further evidence of a tight labour market. Turning to equity news, it was another busy week in reporting season, with 95% of ASX companies having now reported results for the December half. On balance, earnings across the market have been above analyst expectations, with the median company beating consensus at the NPAT line by 0.7%. This has been largely driven by the financials and energy sectors. Beats have outnumbered misses by a ratio of 4 to 3, despite the complex operating environment many companies have faced during the reporting period. Supply chain and labour constraints have been the prominent headwinds called out. Rio Tinto reported record annual profit, with underlying earnings up 72% year-on-year, driven by strong metal prices. They also declared a big dividend of $10.40 per share, up 87% versus the PCP. This is a full-year dividend payment of $16.8 billion, the second largest dividend recorded in the FTSE ever. Block, previously called Square, who earlier this year completed the acquisition of Afterpay, reported gross profit of $1.18 billion, up 47% year-on-year. This was an approximate 2.5% beat to consensus. The beat was driven by Square, the seller ecosystem, and a better-than-feared Cash App result. The Outlook commentary suggests both Cash App and Square gross profit to increase sequentially each quarter, driven by favourable comps, new products, international expansion, and select pricing adjustments. The better-than-expected result and outlook commentary drove a meaningful rally in the share price, closing up 32.5% on Friday. Looking to the week ahead, we will continue to monitor the Russia-Ukraine conflict closely, and we will keep a careful eye on any further sanctions by Western governments. We also have the final day of Australian reporting season today, with the remaining 5% of companies due to report their half or full year results. It is a relatively quiet week ahead with regards to specific economic news. In Australia, the RBA press conference will be held on Tuesday to announce their decision on the official interest rate, which is expected to remain unchanged at 0.1%. Finally, we can expect the euro area inflation rate print for February, where inflation is forecast to rise by 0.1%. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next week.